Welcome to the tree painting part two. So if you followed me on the original tree painting, I made a flip and drag trunk and then these beautiful branches. And this is the first time I've really done a tree in this way. I did another tree a long, long time ago, but look at the beautiful results. All the gorgeous textures and patterns and everything and I could have left it like it is but I really wanted to make this tree something special and so I decided to paint the background. Now I used this Winsor & Newton gloss medium and I used it with some of this gold sparkle by Bling It Primary Elements. It's in my Amazon shop if you're interested. So that sparkle powder I just put in some of the gloss medium and what I want to do is paint the white negative space. But I don't want it to be a color necessarily so I also use some of this pearlescent medium just to give it a little bit more um, body and I see it was very liquidy still and it was a little too runny still because I'm not trying to pour it I really want to paint a layer on and so I went ahead and used this um, Winsor & Newton gloss medium now you can see this one is really thick this one's also um, in my Amazon shop although I believe the packaging has changed now so that thickened that mixture up quite a bit and I was able to see how thick it is, almost like a normal paint. It's very shimmering and very iridescent. And then I used the Indian Spice Bling It, which you can also find in my shop. And I used the same two mediums to make this mixture. Now both of these are relatively translucent. so. That's the cool part. I'm not trying to cover up the white space. I'm trying to give it an extra added sort of depth. So that's the goal with those two. And I really sped this process up because you can't even see it on camera. Um, that's the original gold sparkle. And I did a layer of that. And then I went and did a, I went in between all the branches as you can see and everything. And then I went and did a layer of the Indian spice. And again, it's really hard to see on camera. And then I blow dried it so it was completely dry. And then I wanted to show you, this is what it looks like dried. See, it just has an iridescent quality to it. So when the light hits that white space, you're gonna get that beautiful gold sparkle. Now these little bottles from Kaku, I think is how you say it, K-A-K-O-O, -O, little needle nose bottles, I decided to do some embellishment on the branches and it comes with a little funnel and I use the little funnel to put the paint in the little bottle. Now this is Stuart Semple's Goldest Gold, the goldest gold in the world supposedly. Um, it's, they had sent me a little sample to try and it is pretty and then I just did a few little practice runs on a throwaway canvas, a tester canvas, and then unfortunately my camera died. I'm so sorry you guys. So the whole time that I embellished the beautiful branches, you did not get to see that, but this is what it ended up looking like. I just wanted to make this tree have almost like an energy field coming off of it and so I used the little bottles and made all of these gorgeous gold circles around the tree in that spiral kind of a pattern so I really like the way it turned out and it's very pretty in the light you can see now the next task was I decided to embellish with some gold leaf and this is something I have not worked with before. Um, 
this speedball metal leaf, um, that's the size. Basically, it's the glue that's gonna make the leaf stick. So <clears throat> I painted with just a regular paintbrush all the areas that I decided I wanted the gold to be. And pretty much wherever you put the glue is wherever it's going to stick. And in hindsight, I, I should have been a little bit more careful when painting the glue. I also know that you're not supposed to paint it very thick, so you need to, I dabbed that little part with a tissue so it wouldn't be overly thick. And then you have to wait 30 minutes for the glue to become tacky. The leaf comes in three colors in this package. It was very inexpensive, copper, gold, and silver. And so you can also find that in my shop if you're interested. And so I waited for 30 minutes, that's what it says on the back of the bottle, and I used this so very soft brush. And I have that link too if you're interested. Um, and then I just place some of the gold leaf down over the areas where the glue has become sticky and kind of rub it in. Just give it a little rub and you can see the gold leaf is so delicate it'll just start to break away anywhere that there's not glue holding it down. And then I decided to do it on this side. Now, I thought I was following the white line on the right side of the tree, and I really did try to do that. You know, the glue is clear, and it's hard to see, and so, <laughs> I don't know, I did an okay job. Um, it wasn't as perfect as my Virgo self would have liked, for sure. I definitely... You know, this is my first time using it, so the next time I'll have a better idea. I'll work it probably just a smaller <clears throat> area. That's probably what I'll do next time. Smaller areas at a time. But I did find it difficult to get the gold leaf away from the non-glued areas. I had to scratch it a little bit and... Um, the brush helps. <laughs> you gotta be careful. You, do, you can breathe in this gold leaf. These little crumbs will just fly everywhere. But overall, it worked pretty good. And <clears throat> what I found was I just felt like it had like an unfinished sort of look to it. And that because of the imperfections, in the glue placement, I definitely wanted to do something more. But see how it's very, very shiny. And I definitely like that look, especially with the uh, embellishments that I'd done. So I went, decided to take some of the Van Dyke Brown and a little bit of the Burnt Umber and just go back over the edges of where the gold leaf was. And doing this created a more finished sort of look I think and I'm really glad I did it the other thing is um, it just gave a defined edge and maybe you guys in the comment section can let me know how to get a more defined edge because really you're learning if with me <laughs> or maybe you can teach me something about it because I'm not you know, this is like I said, this is my first time using it, and um, I need an easel clearly because <clears throat> it's hard to film this direction. But I'm gonna be do doing more painting this year. I'm going to do more embellishments, I think, for sure. And then I realized look, you can actually kind of shade the uh, gold leaf with the paint just by rubbing it in. So that was really fascinating too, and it gave all sorts of really beautiful effects, which I was really excited about at the end. So I like that how dramatic it ended up looking going back with the Van Dyke Brown and the Burnt Sienna.
Sorry, I'm off camera again. <laughs> you can tell I'm just figuring this out. But see, basically just using my finger and rubbing it against the wet paint and then against the leaf, it made this beautiful shading effect. So pretty cool and kind of unexpected. I, I didn't imagine that I was going to be able to do that. And I think it gave so much depth and shine to the final piece. And there again, there's the iridescent quality on the, the negative space and the shiny, shiny gold leaf. All the beautiful embellishments on the branches. I thought about putting a little gold leaf apple hanging from the tree. But I did you know, <clears throat> it's hard. <laughs> it's hard to know when to stop, really. But there it is on my wall. I have a chocolate wall in my office. And look how pretty. That's just in the normal sunlight. It's not varnished or anything, so I can imagine when it gets varnished, it's going to be very gorgeous. Very shiny. That's just in the daylight. What do you guys think of this tree? I'd love to hear your comments. I'm definitely excited about it. Um, it's an 18 by 24. It's definitely for sale if you're interested. I'm thinking of finishing it with one of the high gloss varnishes because I think it'll bring out all of that gold. Um, it's a very dramatic piece anyway, so there's no reason why not adding to the drama a little bit of it. But you can contact me for sales or I'll actually put this one up in my store at heathermaderart.com. Um, if I don't sell it in the next couple days or whatever, but thanks so much for coming along with this mixed media journey. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I can't wait to make more art videos just for you. Thanks so much, guys. Bye-bye.